everybody. I've been sitting here reading uh, more medical papers. Uh, I just got through reading uh, a historic account of the wild lettuce. It's a British historic document, and it gives descriptions of the plant by a botanist that was as old as 1627. And it gave uh, analysis of the plant, the types of leaves, the growth habit, the seeds, everything. It was very interesting. And then I've gone on to read the next article I downloaded. It's called The Traditional Use of Kahu, which is the Lactuca Seriola, and it is by Arif Mohammed. Uh, it says uh, it's from Bhopal. So I wanted to read you some of the things that this article talks about the uses of the Lactuca Seriola, the prickly lettuce, the one that sticks you. It says, it is an important drug in the Unani system of medicine. It has been traditionally used for the treatment of headache, insomnia, nervousness, hypertension, palpitation, and fever, and etc. Recently, the, the discovery of active components from the plant and their biological function in disease control has led to active interest in the plant across the globe. It is easily available and cost effective and it's drawn interest in many researchers and is being screened for various bioactive substances. So what this article is doing is examining uh, some of the scientific data on the pharmacognostic description, pharmacological studies, therapeutic uses, and safety profile of the Lactuca seriola. It says that the drug exhibits varied pharmacological activities such as a sedative, a hypnotic, a diuretic, deobstruent, antipyretic, anti-inflammatory, blood purifier, demulcent, refrigerant, anesthetic, antispasmodic, anti-cancer, antibacteria, uh, bronchodilator and vasorelaxant. Woo! -wee. If that wasn't a mouthful, but did y'all just hear that whole list of things that that? Now this is the Lactuca seriola. I'm constantly getting remarks that the Lactuca varosa is the stronger of the plant, but these studies have been done on the Lactuca seriola. And those are all of the things that the Lactuca seriola has been proven to take care of. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. Now we're getting to really big words. Uh, the morphology. Soft, smooth, and Swedish stem with pinnate wide leaves. Okay, we've gotten into the description of the plants. Now, I've learned uh, some, some clever words about the description of the kind of leaves. I'm going to have to really study it to be able to say them in the correct order. Uh, let's see, here is phytochemical studies. The plant contains alkaloids, sugar and glucosides, volatile oil in traces, fat, gums, organic acid, and it's giving all these by the percentage, keratin, 
vitamin B1, vitamin E, vitamin C, vitamin K, says the phytochemical investigations of the seeds revealed the presence of alkaloids. The bitter substance, lettuce, oxalic acid, lactocopecrin, and sesquiterpene esters. The alkaloid lactosin is isolated from the seeds and has an antipyretic activity and a triterpenoid saponin. Okay, I'm going to stop right now. So anyway, let's just sum all that up. I, I had to take a break. That's why I'm doing this video. Y'all see what, what all that was. So I'll probably be doing some screenshots and put that link up uh, for any of y'all who would like to wade into the uh, depths of the pharmacological research studies. But I want to, again, talk about the medicinal benefits of all of the lactucas. Now, not the Lactuca sativa. The domesticated plant has had all of that bred out of it. All of it. But the wild lettuces all have these components. And it makes sense. They're, they're developed certain physical characteristics based on where they grow. It's just like any other plant. Any people. People are like that. Where they're born, they develop certain physical characteristics, and that's carried down through generations. So the plants are all in the same Lactuca family, but they do have some different characteristics. Y'all, there were, there were seven different words to describe that leaf right there. I'm not even going to try it. And so, the bottom line, and y'all know how I get, the bottom line is that all of these lactucas are beneficial. The canadensis, the cereola, the varosa, which there are seven different kinds of varosa. Uh, I'm trying to find the correct variety name for the purple lactuca that I was sent from Arizona. I planted those today in a marked area. Um, not all of them, just a, a few little seed. And these plants, even the ones, there's the Floridiana, the uh, the ones in Africa and India have different variety names as well. But now this Cereola is on every continent everywhere. So it's been the one that's been the most studied. So y'all just heard that list of, of ailments, sicknesses, serious ones, that this plant has been proven to heal. I'm going to discuss for a second the potency. So there's always this debate about using roots, using stalk, using leaves. When you pull them, you know, when is it the most concentrated? What's the most concentrated plant, part of the plant? Well, I'm going to challenge y'all on something. Is it better... And, and I know many of us have serious sicknesses, so we do want something concentrated for the healing of those things. But isn't it better to have a regular diet of the leaves? That's why I'm drying so many, because then that makes it versatile. I eat this stuff every day. 
every day, and I have since 2017. My health is so exponentially better. I feel like a different person. The people that I've been giving it to, the friends and fellow workers that I've given this to, they, they've they remarked on it. So what I think we need to think of, okay, if we have a serious illness that we want to treat, yes, you're going to want some kind of concentrate, something very potent to treat that right now. But you also need to keep the plant in your system. This oxygenates the blood. This corrects broken DNA sequences, which is, is you know, there's so many things, tumors, cysts, cancer. Those are, those are when your molecular structure has an issue. There's so many things, and and if you had this every day, then you're going to build up this residual immunity, this residual health, this flooding of the body with wonderful chemicals. I can't tell y'all when the last asthma attack I had was. I, I don't even remember. Now, I carry my survival inhaler because sometimes if I laugh very hard and for very long, I'll have a small one. But it is nothing like it used to be. Nothing. So, again, I wanted to bring y'all some of that information that I'm reading. Um, I, I can do pretty well for a little while, and then I got to break it up. It, it becomes overwhelming, but I am going to continue on. And as I was driving to work this morning, I went, you know what? I'm going to become a botanist. I have this way of thinking that I'm just like, well, I'm just going to do this thing. And, and, and that's it. We're going to do the thing. Um, I've been like that since I was a child. So I'm looking at microscopes and how to... Uh, perform a cellular analysis of leaves. And if I think that I can do it, I'm going to do it. And when I say become a botanist, I really only mean to learn how to examine these plants so that at least I could get some kind of variety description from the plants, you know, make it a little more comprehensive than what we've been getting. But at the end of the day, all of these lactucas are beneficial, medicinal, healing, miracle plants. And there's plenty more of these plants out there that God provided for us. But this plant right here grows everywhere. So don't worry about the varieties. Make sure that you're getting a lactuca, a wild lettuce, whether it's the bitter or the prickly, whether it's the large or the tall. Make sure you're getting this into your system. And before my video stops spontaneously like it did last night, I'm going to wrap this up and uh, I'm... I've got four days off coming up, and I am so excited. I'm going to get some rest, but I'm going to do stuff. So until my next video to y'all, God bless you all. God bless you all, and have a good night.